it's Paula McMillan Perich and I am the founder of a company called Arts Inc. Since we've been living in Fremantle, we have opened a gallery called West End Fremantle and we also have a studio attached to the gallery. We represent nine or ten different artists and I teach, I teach online, I have students overseas still, I teach in person to adults and kids, I teach pottery, life drawing classes, um, also a student, I'm studying architecture at Notre Dame University. Um, yeah, a parent, throw that in there somewhere, and a wife, <laughs> my domestic duties. And I am Australian artist. I was, um, I'm from New South Wales, grew up on the central coast. In New South Wales, went to university in Newcastle. Went travelling and met my husband, who is from WA and basically the last three decades we've been traveling all around the world. We have our daughter here in Fremantle, our two sons in Melbourne, and then we've been living abroad since 2001. Um, we came back here 2020 because of, to paint bushfires actually. Um, but it's been, yeah, because of COVID, this is now home. Yeah, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. And, um... How would you, what, what has been your like experience in your mantle? Um, it's, it's been good. It's, um, it's always been a place we've gravitated to. My daughter was born here many years ago and we um, have lived abroad for a long time. Whenever we come back to Perth, my husband's family are from the Swan Valley and live in Guildford, but we always gravitate back to Fremantle because it just seems to have you know, a lovely city on the beach, port city, heaps of cafes, restaurants, lots of things to explore all the time. So, yeah, we do love it. We do love it here. Um, I would say the art in Fremantle is obviously reflective of the people. I would say it's energetic, intriguing, colourful, describing the art here, not the people, but <laughs> I think there's a very close correlation. Uh, I think a lot of people are heavily influenced by the ocean, by the colours of the sea. Um, the art that we have in here, it's a lot to do with vineyards and ocean, abstract landscape. A lot of it is you know, the colours of Fremantle, which I think just really stand out, the Indian Ocean in particular. Creativity was like in my everyday life. Um, it comes in all different forms, depending on what day of the week it is, for sure. I generally start out my day doing a thing called sketchwalking, where I take an art journal and go for a walk and I'll draw various parts of the landscape. If I don't have time for that, I will take my camera or my, my cell phone and then just photograph the lake or the, or the river, and, um, various reflections. Um, depending on what day it is, I've got classes pretty much every day. If I haven't got classes where I'm teaching, um, quite often I'll go and join a class as well. I always keep myself open to creativity and join a few courses. Um, if I've got an assignment coming up from university, then that involves a lot of hand drawing, very straight edge kind of linear um, work, not as free flowing as my regular painting style. Um, definitely a big part of my everyday life and if I can't do actual physical painting there's always a creative element in pretty much everything I do anyway. It's not always practical to be working on location but you can do work very very quickly when you're working on location especially if weather's coming or the weather's changing you have only that day to get something done so it's, it's kind of done and dusted in a day you don't have to practice it, re-edit re it, and it's just as it is. Um, this one's also done on location as well. So when you work on location, you capture the light, and the light that you don't get in a photograph. Like you just have that moving light and shadows. You can pick the best part of any reflection to add into the painting. Whereas if you're working from a photo, it's pretty flat and you don't have many choices. Which you probably uh, with that book, could you like show it to the camera? Let me show you this one. This is one of my little favorite ones. How to show you my art with that book, thank you. Um, it's, it's great. It's lovely. I just, I, I think that I gravitate towards subjects that, 
give me joy to paint. So I hope that that translates in the painting or in the sculpture or in the porcelain, whatever it is that I'm doing. I think that by sharing it, um, I think it also comes with years of painting. I think at first you're a little bit guarded. Uh, now I just, I don't really mind what people think about my art. It's, a lot of it is for me, but I feel as though it brings joy to most people. So yeah, so I was thinking about that. Do I think people um, overlook art? Yes, I think they do. We have people come into the gallery, which surprises me, but firstly, they've never been into a gallery before. That, that is blows my mind. Um, but then just the realisation they have in the moment of being in the gallery of how beautiful the artwork is and how they admit to not even having any artwork, but then realising how joyful art, art is. So it's, it's quite bizarre that people just don't have artwork or they have big white blank empty walls. I think it's, it's quite surprising to me because you just art gives you so much joy. Living with art every day, coming here to the gallery every day, into the studio surrounded by artists. People missing out because they don't have art on their walls. Our creativity can be found in everyday life. You can find it in simply as doing a 10 minute sketch every day, which will lead to a 20 minute sketch or even a painting. Um, it is something that you need to keep working at and practicing, and I think there's a quote, I think it's by, I'm not sure, I should cut that out. There's a quote that is, um, creativity is everywhere, it just has to find you working. So you can't, you won't, you won't, um, make a painting or be creative unless you pick up a paintbrush or pick up a paint a pencil and, and start. I think that's the hardest part of being creative is actually just getting started. Yeah. So how would you find passion? I think it's um, a lot of it comes down to experience and I think it's mainly giving yourself permission to just go ahead. Don't listen to the naysayers who say you can't do it. Don't listen to the art teacher who says you're no good or that you don't have any, any talent. If it's coming from within, something you feel strongly about, just tap back into that and go for it. Just walk all those negative sounds out, those negative voices. Because if you're passionate about artwork, about doing art, um, that's the hardest part. Finding the passion is the hardest part. The creativity will just come straight from that.